So the beauty of PowerShell is that we can take a very complicated task and turn it into one single easy to type function. So I want to walk you through how to do that to find all of our group policy objects that are linked to MTOUs and which MTOUs those are. So I sorted it out into three distinct steps. So the first one, we want to find all of our U's that have group policy object links that also have children. So the first step is we want to find all of the OUs that we have that have group policy links and whether or not they're empty. And then step two, we want to find the group policy objects that are linked to those empty OUs. And step three, we want to check to see if those group policy objects are linked to any other OUs that actually do have children. So that way we know whether or not that group policy object is actually doing something. So if it needs to be cleaned up or if it needs to be deleted. First step here, to find all the OUs that have linked group policy objects, we're going to use the get80 organizational unit commandment and use the filter parameter to filter for OUs that have the linked group policy objects property with value in it. So that's where you can see my linked group policy objects with the like operator. So there's all my OUs that have linked group policy objects. And then for each of those OUs, what I want to do is to use the get 80 object commandment and filter for objects in that OU. So I'm using search base, but I've got to comment it out because the OU variable doesn't have any value in it yet. But I'm going to filter for all objects that aren't organizational units. So all objects that could receive that policy could apply to. So here's what that output looks like. And you can see that it's grabbing users, containers, computers, secrets, etc, etc, etc. And so to build a list of empty OUs and non empty OUs, I'm actually going to use two distinct arrays here. So I've got an empty OUs array and a non empty OUs array. So I'll declare those. So declaring these as arrays allows us to use the plus equals operator. Alright, so here we go. In this for each loop, we're looking at each of the OUs in that get 80 organizational unit with that filter from before. And then for each of those OUs, we're going to see if that OU has children. And if it does, uh, then line 24, we're adding that OU to the non empty OUs array. Otherwise, we'll, we'll add it to the empty OUs array. Here's what this snippet looks like. We got some good output to let us know what's happening as well. So we know that domain controllers OU is not empty and the Power Lab users OU is not empty, but the other four are. Here's what those variables look like. So empty OUs is an array of OUs that are empty. And then non empty OUs, array of OUs that have stuff in them. So the next step, we want to find the group policy objects that are linked to those empty OUs. Uh, so to do that, each OU has a linked group policy objects property. And here's what that looks like. I don't know which group policy object that is based on its distinguished name. Uh, but we can pull out the ID from that string using the a substring method. And then with that ID, uh, we can use the get GPO commandlet to pull the group policy object that ID applies to. There you can see that that's the HR group policy object. So the next thing I'm going to declare another array. This is the array that I'm going to build my output for. So I'm going to call it GPOs linked to MTOUs. Kind of a mouthful, but it's very descriptive and we know what it is. And so now for each MTOU and then for each group policy object linked to that MTOU, I'm going to get the group policy object line 51 and then I'm going to output it. So line 52, I'm doing a write host so we know what's going on. And then line 53, if the GPOs linked to MTOUs, if that variable already has that group policy object in it, I'm going to add this OU to the empty OU property as an a string array. And I'll, I'll show you what that means here in a second. But otherwise, I'm going to create a new object. So down here on lines 58 to 62, I'm creating a new object and adding it to the GPOs linked to empty OUs variable. So this is one of my favorite things about PowerShell is building custom objects. You can just do whatever the heck you want. You can see here that my custom object has a GPO name property, which is the name of the GPO, a GPO ID property. And then the empty OU is just the distinguished name of the OU. And then, of course, if there are multiple OUs on the same GPO um, above it, you can see that's where I'm actually adding in line 55. I'm actually creating that empty OU as an array since there's multiple of them. And then the non empty OU, that property doesn't have any value yet because we haven't gone through the non empty OUs yet. So if we run this snippet, we should now see. So our output tells us the HR is linked to two empty OUs, and then IT is also linked to two empty OUs. And if we look at our GPOs linked to MTOUs variable, so we've got two entries here, one for HR, we get the name and the ID. And you can see MTOU is actually a, an array of strings. We've got two OUs there. And then same thing for the IT group policy object. Uh, but neither of them have a non-MTOU property filled in yet. We'll get there. 
So now we want to see if those group policies are also linked to any OUs with children. So this way you know whether or not that group policy object just needs to have some links cleaned up or if you can delete it because you're not using it. So what we're doing here is for each OU in our non-empty OUs object, and then for each group policy object in our GPOs linked to empty OUs, so in any GPO that's already linked to an empty OU, we want to check and see if that OU's linked group policy object contains that GPO. So here on line 77, that's where that if statement is. And if it does, I'm going to write some output just letting me know what's going on. And so if that object already has a non-empty OU property inside of the GPOs linked to empty OUs variable, then what we're going to do is we're going to turn that property into an array and add this OU to it. Otherwise, we're just going to assign that OU to the non-empty OU property. And that might sound confusing, so let me demonstrate what that's going to do. So we'll, we'll run this little snippet here. And you can see that there's only, only one of the group policy objects is also linked to a non-empty OU. And so if we look at our GPOs linked to non-empty OUs variable, we should now see that HR now has an entry for non-empty OU. And so if HR was linked to multiple OUs that weren't empty, that would actually turn into an array, kind of like the empty OU property already. All right, so the last thing is to bring this all together into a function that has some useful output. So we've got the variable that we built. We've got all the code. We just need to wrap it in a function. So that's what I've done here. So I've taken, I've declared my function, get GPOs linked to empty OUs. <laughs> kind of a mouthful again, but you know what? You know exactly what it's doing. So I've got my command line binding. I actually don't have any parameters to specify since it's just returning data. And the rest of this, this is all code you've seen. The only difference here, like on line 103, is I'm using the right verbose instead of right host. So if you want it to output, you can use the dash verbose because we've got the command that binding. Otherwise, you don't need to worry about the output. So I'm going to go ahead and load this into our session here. And we'll jump down and we'll actually use it. So if we use our get GPOs linked to MTOU's commandlet that we just created, that's what it gives us. Well, that's pretty terrible output. Because you can see it's trying to format this as a table with non MTOU's is kind of long. So let's assign this to a variable. We're going to assign it to the GPOs linked to MPOUs variable and then pipe that to the format list variable. And then this is the same output that we saw before. It's just from, instead of writing all that code, it's from just that one function. So that's how you can use PowerShell to not only get all the GPOs that you have linked to MPOUs and then find if they're linked to other use as well, but set it up as a useful function that you can use repeatedly. So your heart's content.